Today on Stories from the Red Couch, Sally and I discuss uh, freedom of creativity. <laughs> life after the life, government. <laughs> life after the government and uh, book writing. Yes. Yeah. Connecting to Indigenous communities. That's it. Yeah. And uh, what it's like to travel with two kids and a husband for 25 days covering how many kilometres? Eight and a half thousand kilometres. Eight and a half thousand kilometres. Don't do it. In 25 days. A six year old and a four year old and a very loving husband. Yes. I'm so impressed. We've made it. Yeah. Watch to the end. It's hilarious. And welcome to Stories from the Red Couch. This is episode 57. I'm Robin Cook, and today my guest is Sally Lawrence. Hey, Robin. Hey, How are Sally. You? I'm fabulous. Now, Sally was on episode eight, and you can jump back and have a look at that because that was about a year ago. Yeah, it's about we're, we're probably yeah 12 months yeah. since that last chat. So that's a it's a good milestone opportunity for me to reflect. Thanks, well, Rob. Well, and and exactly because at that point you had just finished work. Uh, with the department yes, and were launching into a freelance career. How's that gone? Yeah, it's gone great. I haven't, I literally haven't stopped. You know how people like you think when you work for yourself or you branch out from that um, nine to five, you think, oh, I'm going to have a couple of days where I can sit on the couch and watch Netflix no. and or go, <laughs> go and have lunch, you know, with the girls or something like that. But it, I, I've, it's, yeah very rare do I get that opportunity so I've been been quite busy since that's it's fabulous it's been great yeah so what sort of things have you been doing because you've actually been producing things yeah haven't you tell me about that well I guess after I caught up with you last time I got an opportunity to go around um, the state of Queensland I visited about 26 schools and did a, um, a review of a scholarship uh, it's called Quatsif so um, that was the Queensland Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Foundation and they um, the money that the government's got from the stolen wages, there's interest that, that's ge um, generated from that. And that interest that's generated goes into these scholarships and kids all around Queensland can apply for that to help them through to year 11 and 12. So my task was to go and, and meet with, you know, independents, prime, um, high schools, um, Catholics, you know, all those different schools and see what was working and, and how that um, scholarship was working for the kids that, in which they were supporting. So that was great. Um, did some work for Screen Australia um, around, yeah. It okay. was, so a bit of researching, um, visual research, because uh, I'd written that book, The Boys from Baramba, yes. about the Sherberg um, Black Diggers. Um, they asked me to do some research about the, the charge of the light horse in Beersheba because they had that um, reenactment and reunion where That's right. we had some mob go over to Israel and they'd been training, at, I think it was at Helladon out the Ipswich out west there and they were actually riding the horses and they were ancestors of some of those fellas that were in that, that charge. So that was pretty exciting and found some um, amazing photos. Um, so that will come as a part of that movie when that, that one comes out. Um, so that kept me busy to the end of the year and then um, a mob had been asking me to do some work about six or eight months beforehand but my dad passed away so I wasn't really in a place to to do that work but um, then I thought okay they came back to me and said oh we'd love you to, to do some writing for us and that's the current project I'm on and that's one with um, IATSIS and Nelson Cengage so um, IATSIS is the um, Australian Institute of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Studies so that's at Mob in Canberra and they're like the National Archive they hold all oh. the film, TV, um, all the books and music and any language recordings. Okay. It's the National Archive for everything Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander. So um, I'd actually visited them when I was doing the Boys from Baramba project and I think they'd remembered me too from that research. So uh, this partnership is between them and Nelson Cengage, which are the mob that do, you know those PM readers when the boys were learning how to read? Yes. Yeah, you know, here is Sally. Yes. You know, there is Sally. You know, <laughs> those, those books. So it's with that mob that, that okay. do the PM readers. Yeah. So Fabulous. It's been great. Um, 
It's taken me, I was laughing the other week, I was saying, it's my national tour, you know, three <laughs> three cities in a week. Um, yeah. I felt really, you know, a um, bit rock star. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I finally got to get out of the trackies and I went to the big cities and, um, you know, working with their sales team, prepping them and, and doing some cultural capability stuff with their um, staff who okay. are actually building this series with us. That's you know? fabulous. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a great one. It's it's going to be it's for you know P to six, prep to year six. There's these big books that the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander writers have written. Um, so you know these big beautiful books and Robin the artwork on the front, magnificent you know, art that IATSIS hasn't released before. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't been seen apart from the community that it's wow. from and. That's adorning the front covers and the stories are just beautiful. Um, so th there's these big books and then there's these cards. I remember when I was a kid, you know, fast finisher, you get to choose a card out of the box and you independently work. Yes. So there's the books and the cards. Mm. And so my task is to take those stories of um, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander writers and I look at the curriculum and I think, well, what are the opportunities that are in the um, Australian curriculum that we can embed these stories and say, yep, students have achieved these outcomes mm. by putting an Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander story into that um, space and enabling teachers, because sometimes they're not sure. Mm. Um, well, and that's right. So how are the teachers going to access these books? Is it something that they can choose to do or will it come down through the department and out to the schools? Yeah, good question. It's it's one that the schools will actively purchase themselves. They'll purchase this series um, and then the teachers will then implement using the books. But the teacher resource that I write is, is enabling them. It is, it's, um, you know, I, I make them aware of any cultural protocols they may need to be aware of, mm -hmm. you know, so if there was a, a story or a card activity that was about, you know, yidaki, didgeridoo, mm -hmm. you know, clearly saying this is something that women or girls do not touch and do not play, you know, so people aren't making those cultural faux pas mm -hmm. and they can feel confident in knowing that they pick up this resource, it's got axis, you know, that have gone over everything, yeah. Nelson Cengage and you know, the, the, the rigour of those writers, you know, mm. Uncle Bruce um, Pascoe and Gary Foley and Anita Heiss and Tom Mosby and even young writers as well, you mm. know, telling their stories. And for once too, Robin, it's all around Australia. It's just not those places that, you know, where culture has been exotic or seen as an exotic thing, you yes. know, Arnhem Land. Yep, there's stories from there, but We've got stories here from Kabi Kabi country, you know, we, we've got the story of the Bunya Dreaming getting published in there and mm. Ani Nene Bird telling stories. So I, I guess in that sense, if there's schools all around the country, they're able to find something that is local, local. to them and yeah. that's fabulous because it gives those students and teachers a direct connection to, to their country. indigenous country culture. and place. Yeah, yeah that's right beautiful. There. That's beautiful. And then if they've gone through, you know, you were saying the rigour that's involved in it and, and uh, the cultural capability, it means that we are able to feel confident in approaching that, yeah. aren't we? Because like myself, I'm, you know, 73 born and, you know, anybody that I'm talk generally talking to, teachers who are, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, they didn't have that exposure or learning in their primary school, in their secondary school, in their pre-service as a um, pre-service teacher's degree mm. at, at tertiary. And so they haven't had that exposure and so mm. they, they feel, you know, that they're not in the best place to, to share that knowledge. So um, what we want to do is, you know, because we're all products of the person before us not having that, um, that experience or that knowledge shared with them. So. I want to, you know, stop teachers being gatekeepers because of lack of, of confidence or knowledge. And I'm going to say here, you know, here's a product, st it stands behind you, you know, be confident that, you know, everything has been, ch you know, checked, double checked. and. Um, you know, we're going to enable you to now teach that to the next generation so we can, you know, stop that yes. and flick it around because there's so many opportunities in the curriculum to embed, you know, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island perspectives. So mm. this is a great product and it's got a heap of Torres Strait content, you know, I'm a bit biased because of my time up in up the Straits. Yeah. yeah. 
So when I when I started with um, Nelson, I said, you know, I want to see a lot more Torres Strait Island content, and um, so. We, I took them up to Thursday Island in May mm -hmm. and um, introduced them to community and we've got one of the little girls featured, Josie, in the, in the um, books from up there. And um, I said to them, but you've got to give back, you know, you can't just go up there and, and take the photos and write the stories. I said, you've got to give back. So while we were there, we ran a couple of workshops for people who were emerging writers or currently writers that want to look to get their stories embedded. Um, into school curriculum yes. work. So yeah, we've got more Torres Strait Islander writers on board. That's Those fantastic. stories are gonna be there. So, yeah. you know, when we, we, historically, when we've picked up things in the past, it's it's been that cast net approach of this is Aboriginal culture and it's all one thing, whereas it's not, you know, there's, each language group is so different and yes. unique. So we've got that, um, we've got that shown by you know tapping into a lot more Aboriginal communities but now we've also got Torres Strait being represented and mm. some beautiful stories there. So How it's exciting. Wonderful. That is exciting. So yeah that'll come out in uh, for Reconciliation Week next year. So Brilliant. May. Yeah looking forward to that to that being launched. Yeah. So I've still got a bit more writing to do. Um, I've written two of my books and I've got one more to go. So that'll take me through to the, the end of the year and maybe I'll get to the Netflix couch um, <laughs> next year and to start booking up some I don't think some so. Lunches, no. <laughs> so. I like to keep busy. Well, you do, and, yeah. and you've got such an active mind and, and, mm. a, and a driving force around story sharing mm. and, and uh, embracing various cultures so that we can all benefit. Yeah, so I, I just love it, yeah. you know. Who would have known, you know, 19 years ago, you know, I met some, some Torres Strait Island fellas when we were at our um, doing teacher's degree, I used to play beach volleyball with these guys, and they were telling me about the Straits. I'd never heard about the Torres Straits before. Mm. And then, you know, a couple of years later, a job comes up and I head up to the Straits, and that's where I really, you know, um, wet my, you know, the appetite and learnt so much from being a part of mm. the um, Torres Strait Island mm. cultures. Yeah, mm. it was beautiful. That's fabulous. I feel so blessed. I get to go back and, you know, maintain those connections too, because sure. that's important. Sure. Yeah. You're doing other things in your life too, though, and we've got, um, oh. tell me about the, the well, feathers. I brought in some um, black cockatoo feathers. So um, we, we were talking last time, We the black cockatoos from the host tree down the road, mm. you know, they come out this way and they come over my place. And we've had a few in the trees the last couple of weeks, but we've got the black cockatoo retreat, which mm. is the other thing, you know, um, little Airbnb that we love to share our spot at Keels Mountain and so we've opened up our cabin to you know allow other people to come and share yeah. and um, live with us for the weekend yeah. down the cabin but yeah, yeah it's a beautiful slice of paradise. It so. is. So there's a fair amount of work that goes into maintaining it. Yeah. A B&B &B, isn't there? Yeah. So what, what sort of th what did, what's what do you involved? Do? <laughs> yeah, what do you do? Keeping it clean. Yes, keeping uh, it clean. Yeah, mum, mum's great. She she irons the sheets. So you know these crisp <laughs> white sheets. I could never never um, maintain it at such that high standard. But mum's <laughs> on board. <laughs> so she does the um, the linen and Pete's actually oiling the decks as we speak. And um, so there's that maintenance. Mm. Um, so I go in and set it up and put some food and you know make sure it's all nice and comfy before they come and. I guess maintaining a, a, um, a presence through the Airbnb or Facebook and, mm. you know, trying to think of how to keep those, like yourself, how do you keep your feeds on and your, your live feeds and so forth on your Facebook and that, that social media presence for people to want to engage or people to want to come and stay. Yeah. And, so, um, so has that been working? Is that is? Yeah, I seem to be, we're getting more people, um, you know, finding us and more people sharing and recommending us. So um, yeah, I love the space. You know, and we're we're always looking to think what can we do next, and you know, watch out, Hilton, here I come. <laughs> <laughs> Start off with my first no, um, but yeah, we just enjoy um, sharing that and and seeing people get that opportunity mm. to relax mm. and and get away. We're getting a lot of people from Brisbane come up. So um, they just want to get off the grid, you yeah. know, and just disconnect. And we have people that turn up on Friday 
and they don't leave the, the cabin all weekend. They just love sitting out on the deck, mm. watching the birds. You know, we've got the chooks there. You can watch chook TV. And <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, it's been great. Yeah. yeah. And how has it been t now that uh, you, you've had 12 months away from, mm. from the department? What does that feel like uh, personally and creatively mm. to be your own boss? Yeah, it feels great. You know, you're worried in that first instance, you know, should I step out? Should, you know, that leap of faith, yes. I think we talked about last time and, and banking on yourself and mm. you don't know and you just don't know where it's going to lead to. But yeah, that decision, um, whether I made it or the universe made it for me, I think probably the latter. Um, you know, it, it, I have been busy. I, work has found me, you know. Mm. I've been active as well in letting people know that I'm around, but if that work finds you and, and it's nice to be able to choose and it's nice to not be wrapped in red tape and, um, yeah, creativity is, you know, up there rather than just feeling like I'm um, doing administrative tasks, which, you know, for me, my mind and my creative space um, needed to, to, you know, have more room to shine. So, yeah, mm. I've, I've been able to do that and meeting fantastic people along the way and, you know, just sharing my story about being, like we were saying, that kid in a classroom in primary school, mm. my only exposure to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander perspectives was a map, you know, it was outlining the map of Australia with blue colouring and pencil, yeah. Lieutenant Cook there and an Aboriginal fella standing, you know, one leg and a spear there. That was all I was taught. Um, fast forward to tertiary, not having, you know, an, an education even. I had two subjects in my teacher's degree, so not being prepared, mm. you know, to, to be that teacher and, and, and on the other side of it. So I, I'm enjoying what I'm doing because it feels like I'm almost, you know, I'm coming back to my, to fix things up that I didn't have, you know. Do you think there's an opportunity there for people like myself? So I, I'm, a, I'm a 62 baby. So the 60s were just a, a desert of information mm -hmm. as far as Indigenous cultures went. The yeah, 70s, there was we started new. to see that change because yeah. of what was happening in America. But, but for but me now, if I wanted to uh, and, and I have more opportunity now to, to learn, but can we access books like that? Yeah. What, what sort of resources would someone like myself look for? Yeah, there's, well, you can do it through that information. I mean, you could do it through, you know, really being consciously having your Facebook feed, you know, your news feed, tuning into some of those Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Facebook pages so that you're, you're getting current information through to you there. It's engaging like with the tours, you know, how we started the Ration Shed tours, yes. you know, jump on the bus. There's one October 20th, that's the last one for the year. The Ration Shed's um, just about to finish their major renovation. Mm -hmm. You know, jump on the bus and go out to Sherberg and learn about that because that history there is, you know, Queensland, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander history that everybody's connected to Sherberg, mm. you know. Um, you know, actively doing that. Go down the State Library Queensland, go and be part of something, see some exhibits, you know. Mm. You've, you know I didn't, I grew up without a computer, mm. but I'm computer literate now. Mm. So how did I grow those skills when I wasn't taught that at school? Mm. Um, you know, it was Word Perfect 3.1 what was it, one or something, you know, the blue screen back yes. when I was at uni. Yes. I mean, when I was living on, on Thursday Island, the Torres Strait, we didn't even have internet. Mm. So I've acquired those skills because I've had to actively go out and learn them. So same, same there, mm. you know, if you feel that you're, you might be, um, you might have space there to learn more about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island history and cultures and people. You need to actively go out and seek that. And there's, and I mean, clearly there's plenty of oh, information there out there. And, and you know, engage with the community, mm. engage with the elders. And there's a lot more opportunities in which to do that. And, and Woodford's a, a classic example yeah. of that because they, they really actively... Um, engage with the Jinnabara mob out there. That's right. Yeah. And then the, the Kabi Kabi or yeah. Gabi Gabi people here. Yeah. Um, there's lots of opportunities to connect there. was Horizon Festival the other day, Buigari. Um, it's Bui, not Buin. Buigari was on 
um, this week here, up here at Tawanton, you know, Linden mm. and, and that mob. Um, Auntie Bev has the Bunya gathering, mm. you know, and it, it makes me real proud to be able to include her story into this series. Um, this one with IATS is called Our, Our Land, Our Stories and to have Annie Bev's Bunya gatherings, you know, feature in that from the perspective of this little 12 year old girl, mm -hmm. um, Elsie Rudd, and you know, through her eyes and with her family mm -hmm. engaging with that, mm -hmm. that um, it's just, you know, to see culture is out there, there's mob out there, you know, mm -hmm. um, that you can learn from and you j all they want you to do is just sit and listen. Mm -hmm. And if you stuff up, that's okay, you know, mob will tell you. Mm -hmm. um, and you just, you know, seek forgiveness and you, mm -hmm. you learn Move from on. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's no reason really, Robin, now for um, people to say or hang on to that, that byline of, well, I wasn't taught it at school, so, you know, um, that's why I don't know anything about it. Um, there's, you can't use that as an excuse anymore. No. You've got access to community and, and um, organisations and, and opportunities to go and hear from elders. Mm -hmm. And a lot more community now too are, are in the business of, of sharing their culture. This that's is exactly right. their business. Yeah, and very welcoming. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so part of my work is connecting um, mm. some of the services organisations that I come into contact with and, you know, creating opportunities there for c to introduce them to community and community have that opportunity to, to engage and be part of the economy, mm. um, you know, charge for their services like any consultant or, or person of knowledge around a specific area mm. um, would be able to do. So mm. Mm. we've got one coming up um, at Milford Lodge, so did some work with That's, them yes. after I came back from Uluru. Um, so had a PD out there at their um, vineyard, Dusty Hill, out near, at Moffatdale. Mm -hmm. And um, so I talked to a few people and shared my story and, and that seemed to really um, you know, resonate with a lot of people. So they've asked me back and so I bring my mates along. So we've got um, Nicole Simone and she's going to be doing Murray Maths and mm -hmm. talking about um, how to embed Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island perspectives into maths. So, Fantastic. you know, like you think about the bunya cone. Mm. Well, Fibonacci, you'd, mm. you'd be all over that. Um, Fibonacci, there's so much maths in that. Um, you look at the cone and you look mm. at the spiral, just like the sunflower head or yes. the nautilus cone. So we have those mathematical representations in, mm. in nature and in some of the iconic things mm. for Kabi Kabi people. So yeah, Nicole's going to do the maths. Um, Brianna, Annie Bev's daughter, she's going to teach people how to make um, string mm -hmm. out of um, plants and fibre and then teach them then, you know, once you can make string, you can make anything mm. kind of. You can make a dilly bag or a fishing net or, you know, stuff to secure um, branches or so forth together. So those girls are going to join me. I'm going to talk about um, transformative relationships. So talking about basically uh, how to be that significant other, how to um, support Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children and their families and community and how to engage and so you don't make those cultural faux pas and that you are really, it's about building relationships mm. to build trust mm. and um, become family. So, mm. How fabulous. Yeah, looking forward to that one. Yeah. yeah so we've, we've only got a couple of tickets left. We've only had the tickets out for two weeks. Yeah, so get in quick. Yeah, I think there's <laughs> 10 tickets left, so a little bit of a promo yeah, there. But so where can people find out about that? Oh, just ring Milford Lodge okay. there at Budrum um, through their Facebook or, you know, their website. So, mm. you know, hopefully if this goes well, then we'll, we'll look at doing some more and, again, inviting other people to come and join that space. And Brilliant and enable people, because that's what it's about. We just want to enable people mm. to feel confident, to make sure they're not going to be gatekeepers and yes. that, you know, the kids in their care and in within their education that year benefit. Mm. And not just Aboriginal kids, all kids. Of course, yeah, yeah of course. So. That's wonderful. So yeah. Brilliant. So, a few different things on the boil. Big year, big year coming up. Yeah, and then it's the exciting. kids, you know. Yeah, your boys. Got the family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and the family. So, yeah, the boys are good. Nearly six and nearly four. Wow. They've got their little egg business going. I and saw that. They're loving that. <laughs> so uh, it gives them some jobs to do. Yes. And um, it, it makes them, I guess, 
aware of money and, and um, yeah, just having that little responsibility within our family. So mm. that's going good. And um, hubby's, yeah, looking forward to the end of the year and having some holidays. Yeah, well, he's a teacher, isn't he? And He is, yeah. Yes. But um, it was good, I guess, that trip out to Uluru, um, you know, as a family, we're in a car and in a tent for 25 yeah, it's days. it's a bit of a hot house, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It was challenging. I'm not going to pretend I'm um, amazing um, because I'm not. But it was a fantastic opportunity to show and share with our kids, both my husband and I, are really passionate about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island culture. And, um, you know, to actively go and, and, and find that, as we we're saying, you mm. know, to build our cultural capability. Um, but we went to Lake Eyre, so we went uh, out to Inaminka, down the Strizleki, and um, that was nice and smooth. But then up the Udna Dada, uh, after we came out of Lake Eyre, that was pretty bumpy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, into Uluru, and then up to uh, at Uluru, I got to catch up with Annie Nelly Patterson. She, she took me through business out at Uluru um, in 2009. Mm -hmm. And um, it was there that they realised I'd never had a, a, a fella, mm -hmm. I didn't have a hubby. And so they made me do man dance. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. Met, and you got one. <laughs> I, I, met, I met my husband three months later. So um, I got to go back and see Auntie Nellie and, and take, take, take my husband and my two kids. <laughs> and I said, You're responsible for this, Auntie. <laughs> so that was really nice, you know, keep connecting and yeah, yeah, uh, right. reconnecting to those um, people that have been significant in my life. Yeah, that's mm, beautiful. Mm, then we went up to Hermansburg. Mm -hmm. That was fantastic. Up, up there and um, and then we kind of thought we wanted to go to Lawn Hill the year before and we didn't have the right tyres on so we made a mad dash up to Lawn Hill National Park so we got all the way up in the Gulf Country there wow. and had a beautiful week at, at Lawn Hill National Park and and then you know made the the run home so Yes. There was there was eight and a half thousand k's in yeah twenty five days. It's, wow! Yeah, that's big. It is big. Yeah, so yeah, um, yeah. we came back a couple of days earlier and and all had a little holiday from each other. <laughs> Tom went back to school. <laughs> George went to daycare. <laughs> Abby did what he needed to do and and uh, yeah because that is intense. It, it is, is intense. Yeah. Well, it, intense. intense. <laughs> I know, I know. It was intense, but <clears throat> fantastic. Yeah, yeah, good on you. So we're we're planning the next trip and see where where that will take us. Brilliant. Hopefully, get back to the Torres Strait at some point, and yeah, who who else knows? You know where we're, where we'll go. Mm. But yeah, we we always seem to to um, find the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures when we when we travel. Beautiful. I love it. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, Sally. Thanks for joining me. No worries. So nice to catch up on all your adventures. Just before I go, though, yes. I um, made something for you. Did you? Yeah. What did you make? Given that it was your birthday this week. Oh, yes, yes. it was. <laughs> so just this little something that I um, put together. Oh. Uh, uh, no, not really. I, <laughs> Great cafe up the road. <laughs> it was in, it was baked in someone's yeah, oven. <laughs> that's it. So uh, I'm I'm not a baker, but yeah, happy birthday to you, Robin. Oh, thank so you. Here's to celebrating. How nice! And look at that. The flame is green. Green. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, I don't know if you can see that, but the flame's green. It's amazing. Oh. Yeah. Here I we think go. It's, yeah, it's all it. So. so. Thank you. Here's cheers. cheers, mate. Here's cheers. Yeah. And thanks again for letting me join you on the red couch. That's a pleasure. Another year down. Oh, we'll, we'll come back and see each other in the in a year's time, yeah. mate. Make it a date. We will. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we will see you next time. Share Sally's story again, Facebook, YouTube, all of that. And, and look for those books next year. Yeah. Bring them into your school and community. It's a good thing. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Peace, cheese. Mm. <laughs>